Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory and the drug famotidin, a common over-the-counter histamine 2 receptor, might possibly address the novel coronavirus. And the Innovio Pharmaceuticals and Korean government closed a deal on INO4800, a vaccine candidate, and it starts its phase 1 and 2 trial in Korea this month. All of this starts now. A group of prominent New York-based physicians and scientists led by Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, Northwell Health Cancer Institute, conducted a retrospective case series targeting 10 non-hospitalized patients with SARS-CoV-2, the virus behind the COVID-19 pandemic. It has been alleged that the over-the-counter histamine 2 receptor antagonist called famotidin could possibly address the novel coronavirus. Now, this insight originally derived from the analysis of Dr. Robert Malone and a team associated with the U.S. government research contracts, as well as observations of a prominent physician and researcher named Dr. Michael Callahan after his analysis of over 6,000 patients' records at the Wuhan pandemic epicenter. After monitoring and quantitatively analyzing the longitudinal changes in patient-reported outcome measures of patients who had been self-administering high doses of famotidin orally, the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory and Northwell Health investigational team found that not only are high doses well tolerated, but they are associated with improved patient-reported outcomes in non-hospitalized patients with COVID-19. Meanwhile, a large study at Northwell has commenced back in April, including both hydroxychloroquine and famotidin. But there is uncertainty with the use of the anti-malarial drug moving forward. So let's talk about the drug. Famotidin is a common over-the-counter drug that can be used to treat ulcers, gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, and conditions that cause excess stomach acid. It is also used to treat heartburn and acid indigestion. Trial site news showcased the potential of this drug based on interactions with Dr. Robert Malone, who was active in discovering the potential of this drug in regards to COVID-19. Now, as president of R.W. Malone, M.D., Dr. Robert Malone, along with other consultants associated with the U.S. Defense Threat Reduction Agency, or DTRA, employed the use of supercomputer-based analysis to identify existing U.S. Food and Drug Administration-approved drugs that may be useful against the novel coronavirus. The team focused their attention on a SARS-CoV-2 virus protein that was overlooked by large pharmaceutical companies. Of the top-ranked drugs identified by applying the drug discovery system for DTRA, the team determined that famotidin had the most attractive combination of safety, cost, and pharmaceutical characteristics. Dr. Malone presented the findings and recommendations to Dr. Michael Callahan and the ASPR by March. Now, a prominent physician scientist, Dr. Michael Callahan, with expertise in mass casualty infections, is a staff physician for Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. During the pandemic outbreak in Wuhan, China, Dr. Callahan traveled to China and got involved with an analysis of over 6,000 patient records, 1,100 of whom had severe COVID-19. Now, the analysis revealed that about 600 of the patients were on antacid therapies and were found to have mild COVID-19 disease compared to others of similar age and health. Now, the incidence of COVID-19 dropped quickly, and Dr. Callahan and colleagues were not able to start a clinical trial to test famotidin as a promising oral treatment for COVID-19 disease, but he was certainly intrigued. So thereafter, Dr. Callahan took a leave of absence from his current employer, where he serves as president of Cellular Therapies at United Therapeutics, to support the government effort against the pandemic crisis as special advisor on COVID-19 to the Assistant Secretary of Public Health Preparedness and Response, or ASPR. Now, on March 18th, 
Dr. Malone presented a summary of team findings and recommendations to the ASPR on the potential use of famotidin. Now, both Callahan and Malone, collaborators from the past, were unaware of each other's work connected to this anti-acid, but connected here and agreed to collaborate. Now, with the convergence of these two independent discoveries, Northwell Health System was contacted to explore the possibility of performing well-controlled trials with the Northwell Hospital System. And so Northwell agreed that this repurposed drug candidate was worthy of rigorous evaluation of activity in randomized trials. As we saw in New York, initially hydroxychloroquine was established as the standard of care for hospitalized COVID-19 patients, then famotidine was added to this study. Then, in April, Northwell Health launched a study led by Dr. Joseph Canigliero to evaluate the clinical efficacy of COVID-19 treatments consisting of a standard of care, or SOC, combined with pharmaceutical antiviral management using hydroxychloroquine, or SOC with hydroxychloroquine combined with hydrose intravenous famotidine in hospitalized patients meeting nucleate acid diagnostic and radiologic criteria for COVID-19 disease. It is not clear how the latest findings and controversy with hydroxychloroquine will impact this study, but trial site news will inquire. Now, the larger trial has been designed to statistically compare the clinical benefit afforded by the two treatment strategies to internal historical standard of care data from Northwell patients treated without benefit of either hydroxychloroquine or high-dose famotidine. Now, this study seeks to compare clinical outcomes associated with hydroxychloroquine and the addition of high-dose intravascular famotidine. The trial is designed to enroll at least 600 COVID-19 patients hospitalized with moderate to severe disease into each of the two active treatment arms, with a total enrollment target of at least 1,200 patients. The proposed trial has been designed for rapid enrollment and completion and powered to support two interim analyses that will enable prompt assessment of benefits and risks of the two treatment groups while maintaining the rigorous gold standard of a randomized, double-blind clinical trial structure. The trial design has been guided by practical consideration of the current clinical context involving rapidly escalating demands on hospital staff and resources, and incorporates a minimalistic approach employing existing laboratory information management systems and a clinically relevant binary primary outcome of a 30-day endpoint of death or survival. Now, this retrospective case series of patients self-medicated with famotidine during COVID-19, led by David Tuveson with Cold Spring Health Harbor Laboratory, the investigational team set out to collect de-identified patients reported outcome measures of patients with confirmed COVID-19 who self-medicated with famotidine at any dose during the period of illness. Data was then collected via questionnaire and telephone interview. Sponsored by Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in collaboration with Northwell Health Cancer Institute, the investigators received support from other researchers from Ruprecht Karls University Heidelberg in Germany, University of Cambridge, Columbia University, and Feinstein Institutes for Medical Research, part of Northwell. The team then sought to evaluate famotidine which, as I mentioned earlier, is a drug safely used for suppression of gastric acid production over a wide range of doses from anywhere from 20 milligrams once daily to 160 milligrams four times daily. Now, in computer-based simulations, famotidine has been identified as a potential inhibitor of the three chymotrypsin-like protease. In a propensity score-matched retrospective cohort study, a significantly reduced risk for death or intubation was identified for patients with COVID-19 who were taking famotidine before or at the point of hospital admission. Now, some individuals have self-medicated with famotidine, as I mentioned earlier, while being out patients with COVID-19. This study was aimed at collecting patient-reported outcome measures from such individuals. Upon executed informed consent documents, the team enrolled consecutive patients. Per the study protocol, they used patient-reported outcomes to investigate the impact of famotidine, collecting data including demographics, COVID-19 diagnosis, famotidine use, drug-related side effects, temperature measurements, oxygen saturations, and symptom scores using questionnaires and telephone interviews. So, Ensuring National Institute of Health's endorsement of the protocol, they collected longitudinal severity scores of five symptoms, including cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, headaches, and insomnia. 
as well as general unwellness on a four-point ordinal scale based on performance status scoring. Reporting data at the patient level, the team combined, calculated, and statistically compared normalized symptom scores. So let's talk about then the results. The study team identified 10 COVID-19 patients who self-administered high-dose famotidine. The most common regimen, as reported in the gut article, was 80 milligrams three times daily for a median of 11 days. The drug was well tolerated. All of the patients reported significant improvements of disease-related symptoms once the famotidin regimen commenced. Interestingly, the combined symptom score improved greatly within 24 hours from commencing the famotidin regimen. Moreover, overall combined system scores improved within 24 hours. The investigators came to the conclusion that high-dose famotidin is not only well-tolerated, but also associated with improved patient-reported outcomes in non-hospitalized patients with COVID-19. So in conclusion, this was not a randomized controlled trial, and moreover, the patient sample size is considerably small. So no conclusions can be made as of yet. But based on these observations, based on those of Dr. Robert Malone and Dr. Michael Callahan in China, there very well could be something to the use of famotidin in at least targeting mild to moderate cases of COVID-19. And now we turn to Inovio, the International Vaccine Institute, and Seoul National University Hospital, which announced the partnership to commence a phase one and two clinical trial of Viano 4800, Inovio's COVID-19 vaccine candidate. A formal signing ceremony occurred involving key principles for this important event in Korea. The clinical trials will start this month in June. Now, several nations have been in a race to secure advanced purchase of investigational COVID-19 vaccine products. For example, the U.S. government has purchased and invested $1 billion in AstraZeneca to accelerate development, manufacturing, and hopefully distribution of a safe and effective vaccine for SARS-CoV-2. Canada has also formed an alliance with China's CanSino Biologics, and now Korea moves forward with U.S.-based Inovio. A number of groups came together to structure this deal, including Inovio, Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness, or CEPI, the International Vaccine Institute, Korean Ministry of Food and Drug Safety, and Seoul National University Hospital. Of note, collaborators IVI and SNU Hospital have collaborated in the past in the conduct of Phase 1 and 2A trials for a MERS vaccine, or INO 4700 GLS 5300, developed by Inovio and South Korea's Gene 1 Life Science, and in trials conducted so far, achieving promising results. And now Korea will host a phase two clinical trial, the very first one of a COVID-19 vaccine to assess the safety, tolerability, and immunogenicity of the candidate vaccine in 40 health adults aged 19 to 50 years, and will further expand to enroll an additional 120 people aged 19 to 64 years. In most normal circumstances, a clinical trial such as this will involve years of work. However, given the global COVID-19 pandemic, the study will last only a couple of months. A similar study commenced in the United States in early April. Now, this critical vaccine study will be led by Professor Myung Dong Oh of SNU Hospital. The principal investigator noted that social distancing is making life challenging in all different aspects of our country, including business, education, culture, sports, and international exchange. And we have reached a point where we cannot utilize social distancing any further. But optimistically, Dr. Don continued. He said that we have to return to normalcy, and today's launch of the vaccine clinical trial will provide significant momentum in easing fears over the pandemic and helping return to normalcy. And that concludes our episode of the Weekly Roundup. Thank you so much for joining us for this presentation. From Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and this is the Weekly Roundup.